Hey there, I am Chris Palmer, and if you're watching this video, I completely feel for you because what you're trying to do is reinstate your suspended business. And I've gone through this quite a few times. Now, the tips that I want to lay out for you today are going to be, I'm going to give you a bunch of them. But first and foremost, I'll share with you the reinstatement request form. I'll share with you the both ways that you do that. I'll also give you some helpful tips if this doesn't work and you just want to get in contact with Google because sometimes that's the best case scenario. And I'll also share with you because I get asked quite a bit, Chris, you know, you've gotten your business suspended and they'll ask you for your business ID, but you're suspended and you can't get in. I'll share with you how you can find that now. All right, so I don't want to waste any time. Again, my name is Chris Palmer. If you are interested in any kind of service or any way I can help you, check out chrispalmermarketing.com or seomastermind.org. With that out of the way, in the description below, I'll share with you the link to this form right here, which is called the reinstatement form. Now, if you are a business owner where you got where you have gotten your business suspended, you will receive an email that will contain a link to this reinstatement form. Now, the difference between the email that you get from Google and the one that I'm sharing with you here, there's one main difference. And the difference is wording. When you fill this form out here, did you already submit? Obviously, you're going to say no. But instead of this saying that you're a representative, the one that's inside your email you're submitting as the owner. Now it's always best practice to fill out two because I've had the best success getting businesses back and reinstated by filling out both. And this is exactly what these companies will do. They'll fill out two reinstatement forms, right? So they're going to, you'll fill out the one that you get in the email. You'll go through here and you're going to fill this out. Yes. Uh, does your Google business profile comply with the quality guidelines? Yes. Is your business permanently located? Yes. Have you entered the uh, entered an accurate street address or service area for your business? Yes. Does your business operate in the service area? In other words, does your business require your authorized representative of the business to travel to the customer's location? Yes. Do you conduct face-to-face -face business at your location? That's whether it's, it might be yes or no. Yes. Do you have multiple profiles of the same location? No. Okay. And then this is where a lot of people might get stuck. All right. A lot of people might get stuck at this particular portion of the form, regardless if the form ha is the one for you as the owner that comes to your email or you're filling it out as a representative. Because when you're filling this out, your name, your email address, the name of your business, right? What address or service area are you in? But this is the one that I got a lot of questions about the business profile ID, okay? Let me share with you now because I'm sure you could fill out the rest, right? Here's the phone number. Please provide additional details. You need to put something in here. You don't have to go into complete detail. Do a one, here's one reason. Two, here's another reason. Because I assure you that this, for the most part, is not manual. This is an automatic process. Do you fill this out? I had multiple businesses that I just filled out all of the information and it was 50-50. You know, like it's 50 50 if you get it back. Okay. But with that being said, I'll share with you right now. And this too, these are the documents. You can read through here some of the documents. Um, I won't get into what we did and how we know that this is literally just a automatic. It's either a yes or a no. It's 50 50. But I can assure you that there's not actually a person looking at these. I know that for a fact. At least in the last 90 days, there hasn't been. But let me share with you where you get your business ID from. So I have a suspended business here. I had a past location when I and when I moved, they suspended the listing because I went in there and I actually, it's at a different location in New York. I opened it up inside of a different email. I got it uh, disabled and I said, hey, I have a new address. But anyway, it's suspended, right? So you're probably inside of here. I'll share this with you. You got a suspended listing and you want to fix it, how do you get this business ID to put into the reinstatement request? Well, here's how you do it. So you come over here on, on the new dashboard. You're going to click on these three dots here, and then there's a button here that says uh, business profile settings. When you come into the business profile settings, go to advanced settings, click on that. When you click on advanced settings, this right here is the number that you need to use, okay? So see how this number is right here? You could copy that ID and then actually put it into the business profile ID number. So for reinstatement, 
here is the number right here that you're going to need. Now, I've talked about the first form that you get inside of your email that you're going to submit the reinstatement form as the owner. I've also talked about sending in a reinstatement form as a representative. Now what I want to share with you is just some other helpful hints for maybe getting somebody on the phone because when you're blocked out, you don't have access to that dashboard anymore. So after filling both of these out, if you still cannot get the, like if you're a legitimate business and you still can't get it to show up, there's one last thing that you can do and it's go into the same exact address. If you go into the actual address, let's say that this is your business address, okay? Go into the same exact place, okay? So let's just say it's 123 Meadow Lane, okay? I'm just using, this is just a hypothetical situation, okay? You're gonna go into the actual business address. It could be in the same exact building. You'll right click and add your business again. Add it one last time. And here's why. If you add the business in, this is if everything else fails. Add the business in. And when you're actually trying to get a unique listing, even though it's not verified, unless it verifies for you, Google's going to give you the opportunity to be able to contact them. Because did you notice inside of the suspension, you can't get in contact with them? Well, inside, once you actually have another one, you can contact them. And then you could maybe perhaps... If all of your ducks are in a row, you have all of the documentation, you're on the up and up, you're a legitimate business, which I know you are. As long as you have all your ducks in a row and you can actually prove you're legitimate, the probability of you getting your other listing back is very high. There's one more thing that you can do. All right. Um, these are these these last two are fail safes. Like if nothing else is working, what I what the other thing that I've noticed is this. If you go to the Google ads, all right. You know, they might block you out on Google My Business. They might block you everywhere else. But I guarantee you, if you go into the ads platform, so I'm, you may or may not have it. It's easy to sign up. It's free to sign up. It's, it's very easy to sign up. But let's say you go into your ads platform. You have to sign up with the account. But no matter what, like no matter what, you can always, 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 always get someone on the phone through the ads platform. Verify support requests, like contact us. You can always get a actual person through the ads platform, all right? They can, and if the first person will do it, try it again. There's, there's tons of them. I've never gotten the same person twice ever, okay? Whether I needed help with ads or other ways to get in contact with Google. This is another really good way to actually get somebody on the phone. Plus, there's countless phone numbers that you might be able to find online, but I never had success with those. I've had success opening up other businesses and then getting someone on the phone, right? Another thing, too, is I noticed this. Like, when you actually have your business, you know, if you go through this platform here, as you're, like, say you want to set up a new business. If you go through, like, you're going to set up another business, you know, when you go to sign up, they give you a free $500, before they give you the free $500, they give you the account, right? Because if I set up a new business, they'll give you a free 500 bucks to spend on ads. Well, as soon as they give you that, I can't set up ads because you suspended my business. Again, you'll be able to get them on the phone, all right? These last four tips that I gave you are if everything else fails, try to do it the way that they want you to first. But if you just can't and you're actually a legitimate business, these last four ways will work for you. My name is Chris Palmer. If there's anything that I could ever help you with, never hesitate to reach out. Calendy forward slash Chris Palmer Marketing. I'm always happy to help. Check out Chris Palmer Marketing. If you have a question, ask below. If there's anything ever, any time that I could help you with, I'd be happy to do it. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I'll see you then. Have a great day. Bye-bye.